Duji was born in Detroit, Michigan on July 3rd, 1970. When Duji was eight years old, her parents moved to Rockford, Illinois. She learned how to ice skate and did that until she was 16 years old. So I ice skated from the age of eight all through my, I stopped my junior year in high school, uh -huh. which was 16 years old. And I had had enough. I, I woke up before school, went and trained, went to school, left school early, went and trained. And it was just, I and wanted to point, be normal. What's the point of that? If you're not going to be in the Olympics or something, what's I, the point of that? I didn't want to, I was a teenager. I wanted to have fun and go I out, party and to, drink. No, I tried to quit a couple of times and my parents had invested all this money. So they were forcing me to stay and then just more issues. So well, I finally said- how good were you is basically I, what he I wants to know. I was a senior competitor. So there's, you make it to your, back then they had the, you remember the figure eights, like the test, the gold, the eighth. Anyway, I was at the top you could go as far as competitiveness, mm -hmm. but I wasn't on any any scale as far as nationally. Okay. There was no, when I was younger, I was good. And then I got older and I didn't want to do it anymore. So I just didn't care. Uh, my first job, I was 15 and I worked, uh, it was in Rockford and I worked at an ice cream shop. Uh, up by where I lived in my, my parents' house, little area where they had like these little shops and it mm -hmm. was like the go place, mm -hmm. to go place for all the kids. And I worked there and then I worked at a country club when I was 16. My positive thing to say about Duji is... She's so I only have to see her five days a week, not seven. And that's a positive, as far as I'm concerned. Duji went to Winona State in 1988, right after high school, and graduated in June of 1992 with a Bachelor of Arts in Communication and a minor in Creative Writing. She never did anything in college with radio. She worked on the college newspaper for two years called The Winonan. She worked at her junior year as a graphic artist and then her senior year as the advertising manager. After college, Duji was a door-to-door -door salesperson for a company selling dining gift cards. Duji also worked at the Rockford Register Star in the graphic departments creating ads for salespeople. Duji also was a marketing manager for McDonald's. She ran four restaurants in downtown Chicago for an individual owner. Duji worked at an upscale restaurant in downtown Chicago called Lola's. Soon after, Duji worked at Studio One on One in Chicago as the office manager. While she was running the fitness studio in Chicago, she would listen to WLUP The Loop all the time. She loved Johnny B and Kevin Matthews. That was when she realized she wanted to work in radio and her boss at the fitness studio said he would help pay for her to go to Illinois Center for Broadcasting as long as she stayed with him. Illinois Center for Broadcasting, Chicago campus, offers hands-on training in all areas of radio and TV broadcasting and online media. Right before she started classes, she sent her resume and cover letter to the radio station and asked them to just meet with her because she knew she would be great at the job and all the interviewer had to do was meet her and she would win him over. The program director liked her cover letter, so she got an interview. They offered Duji the internship and her boss at the fitness studio fired her immediately. wonder to this day how did do she get her radio name i know she doesn't use her real name but how she got the name do, the radio name do she i always wondered I did that, that in chicago oh I, yeah when you worked in chicago Kevin, i forgot, I that, for, I forgot he, about that i, for, I yeah, forgot he, that story so yeah. i thought you and the you and julia lewis Dreyfus were like just long lost twin sisters or something you both had big foreheads starting out in radio i was an intern i had already had a college degree 
My parents were furious that I was working at some radio station in downtown Chicago. I couldn't pay my bills. I couldn't do anything. I was sitting on the floor of the, the morning show office and I called my mom and dad and I said, I'm in trouble. I need some help. I have no money. I'm working my ass off for this radio station, but I'm an intern. So I have no money coming in. Will you please help me? And they said, no, they, they flat out said, nope, you're never going to make it. What are you doing? Quit. Why are you working for free? And my boss heard this go on and I'm in tears he, the next day, came in with a personal check. And he goes, it's not much, but it's How a little much? something. It was 200 bucks. And it meant, the, and I'll never forget, because again, I'm an intern in the number three market. And I went to the copy machine and I enlarged that check because it was the first time I had realized that Kevin Matthews wasn't oh, his Oh, my name. God. What a talk show. Talk oh, show. Oh, there we go. My God. Talk show. I'm talk drawn to this. That yeah. struggle. Kevin oh. Matthews Kevin. is the oh. best. Oh. He is the best. If you're out there listening. Yeah. I love you, Kevin. But she decided to look for another radio job, and that's when she talked to a comedian friend about a job opportunity in L.A. The Craig Shoemaker Show with Craig Shoemaker. This was in 2000. Duji produced The Craig Schumacher Show at Comedy World. While in LA, Rover had been hired to do overnights at Comedy World. Duji would see him there because she was in early at the studio to work on Craig's show. Later on, Craig got fired, so then Duji worked with Ahmet Zappa and Kennedy, former MTV host, current Fox News host. The show was called The Future with Ahmet and Kennedy. This just in, Kennedy's a racist. They will take you down to Chinatown. You can't handle the truth! Oh, fine, that's great. The eyes are your balls inside your head. <laughs> Doogie? A lot of bush, but overall, not that bad of a puss. There you go, <laughs> that's your footage. Then, the operations manager asked her to work with Rover to help him on his show. At that time, Rover was working on a show with his best friend. They said he had a lot of talent, he just needed guidance to do talk radio with some direction. While closely working together, Duji and Rover got serious and started their long relationship. Maybe people don't know that I dated Rover for many years. And yeah. Some of us together. are trying to forget. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, we're going to bring that up there. <laughs> yeah. New listeners need to know that. We dated, we dated. You struggled. I paid for your Porsche because when I met you, you were rich and then you lost it all. As quickly as Rover was hired, Comedy World goes under. So Rover and Duji moved from L.A. to Rover's mom, Nancy's house in Vegas on July 3rd, 2001, which happened to be Duji's 31st birthday. While in Vegas, Duji got a job at Applebee's to help pay the bills and to pay for Rover's Porsche he got when he was at Comedy World. Duji would often take some of her tip money and go to the casino to try and gamble to make more money since the bills were mounting. At that time, Duji and Rover both agreed to try and get a job in radio and the first one to get a job, they both would move there. Duji, from what I hear, a lot of bush. Not a bad puss, though. Wait, you're stealing mine? Wait, that's the same one. Wait, what? <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, I'm giving him some footage. He needs footage <laughs> of good things about her. Gonna be? I yes. heard. <laughs> it's I a heard. documentary on her bush. <laughs> I heard. That oh, she you did does... hear it. Yeah, yes, that's this true. is what I'm saying. I okay. heard it from you. Dushi then got hired on 106.7 The End in New Orleans doing mornings with Rod Ryan in 2001. Rover and Duji moved to New Orleans. Rover continued to look for a morning show job while Duji was doing mornings in New Orleans. Rover was there with Duji looking for a job. She's got a nice big, got a nice size caboose. Now I haven't seen her can, so I really can't comment. But so, if you imagine. If I imagine, I think she's got a nice, nice little rack going. What? I, I was, shaved Doogie's bush uh, before. Because... I would watch Golden Girls. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. In 2002, Rover gets hired to do nights in Seattle. 
Rover leaves Doogie in New Orleans to go do radio in Seattle. He gets an apartment in downtown Seattle and starts his new radio job. Doogie stays in New Orleans doing mornings and gives her notice to leave. Doogie then left New Orleans and heads to Seattle to try to find a job in radio there since that's where Rover is at. Doogie was there not even a full two weeks and Rover gets fired. I gotta find him. We're fucked. Doogie looked for a quick job and got hired at Washington Mutual in the Home Loans Department in downtown Seattle. This was in 2002. Doogie worked at Washington Mutual until Rover got a job. In February of 2003, Rover was hired in Cleveland to do morning radio. Doogie and Rover both drove from Seattle to Cleveland so Rover could start doing mornings at 92.3 Extreme Radio in March of 2003. Doogie figured once they got there, she could try to find a radio job there once Rover got settled in. Soon after, Doogie joins Rover as his co-host on the number one radio show. This is Rover's Morning Glory. Rover. Confident in my manliness. Doogie. I almost pooped my pants. And here we are, almost 19 years later. And they are still working together on the best damn radio show ever, Rover's Morning Glory. Doogie finally made it to the top. The instigator. I will say this. I'll give a compliment. I don't find a lot of women funny. And usually women do not make me laugh. I can't think of too many, but Doogie does have the ability to make me laugh. Whoa, this yeah, is getting real nice oh. and serious. Now, that's here. one comment I'll give her. She, she's, she is hard to work with at times, but you'll notice most women don't make me laugh. While working on this short documentary on Doogie, I asked her if she could name the most amazing day of her life. Was it when she met her childhood idols, Duran Duran? Or was it the day RMG got a call from CBS Radio to replace Howard Stern? Or was it the night she went to her first Cheap Trick concert? No, the absolutely best day of her life, she said, is the day her daughter Gianna was born. She made Doogie realize there's more to life than work. She enjoys motherhood so much and looks forward to watching Gia grow each and every day. From what I've heard, from multiple sources, from multiple sources, uh, anonymous, uh, Douchey has a little bit of bush, but not a bad puss. <laughs> I can't believe that's what I'm saying. All right, we know it's this is all that one. So. <laughs> I can't wait to watch the documentary. Good morning, it's Gianna's morning glory. <laughs> Vagina or penis? Those guys' knees, that's him. Dude, 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 come on, come on. Hey, here's me. Hey. <laughs> oh, over here! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Hey! hey. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, okay. Why don't you guys get a picture, man? Oh, we're here, all right. No, wait. Give him one of your beers. You got beers? I haven't drank a beer yet. Let me have a beer, dude. What the hell is this? I mean, that's a Hank beer, it's right. All right, guys. Drink the keg. I got it. Hey, dude, nice to meet you, man. You got a horse there, man. You have anything you need? Let me know. Hey, 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 you got a horse there. It's not, I mean, I'm just, I've been full of it since I was a kid. I'm just. You're sick? Hey, can't stand, man.
If you, I mean, dude, she's not a bad-looking girl. Yo, mom! <laughs> <laughs>